So today I want to talk about uh, defending the knee slice, essentially. So I feel like I've done a good job of putting a lot of good knee slice content out there. And if you guys didn't know, I have a whole instruction on BGG Fanatics that's free, which is essentially me teaching my offensive knee slice system. Okay. Now I'm going to show you motherfuckers how to not get done in like everyone else. Okay. How do I stop myself from getting knee sliced now that other people are actually starting to get better at it? Okay. So first off, remember the principles involved in knee slice happening to you. Okay. For him, it's about this underhook and preventing me as a defender from getting it on him. Okay, but the underhook is a point of control for him, right? Um, if he didn't get his underhook, he can get on my hip good enough and kind of get on a body lock, that would act as an underhook. Okay, he can't let me underhook him. Okay, and the way he's going to keep underhooks is going to be by sticking something and being able to get closer to the underhook itself and preventing people running away so I can just pump. Okay. So like I said, I like to do a lot of sit-up guards. Okay, I really like shin on shin, I like wrestling on I like dummy sweeps, I like arm drags. And this position itself is inherently easier for him to knee slice through than a position where I'm on my back. Okay, and the reason why is Bird can really attach to these underhooks. He can get close, he can get his chest close, and he can maintain pressure and then start his cut. Whereas something where I'm on my back and I'm on the ground, okay, he's gotta come down to me or he's gotta reach for his underhook or he's got to do variations of diving knee slices where he's going and already kind of falling into that underhook. But you see the similarities there, it's all about kind of him closing off that space. Okay? So the better his underhook is, the more fucked I am. Right, so how do I stay safe from these sit-up guard positions? First off, open guard in general. Right? If you ever watch me rolling, and I think if there's any danger, I'm going to get knee sliced by a guy. I can burn as a really fast, good, like really well-timed knee slice, so I'm a lot more careful when I'm rolling with him. I'm never here. My elbows are not ever on the outside of my knees because they're too flared. And right now, Bird could just step in, grab my head, and he could just go. He knows he can full send it at any time. And if I let him start to go and get that underhook, it's a, a lot of times it's going to be too late. Okay, so just by being aware of your elbows, you can prevent a lot of these slices from happening. You know, like you're going to be more here than anything. Now, he might be able to step in and bait me to make an underhook available, but I'm not stupid today. I'm not gonna grab his fucking leg when he steps in. Because if I grab his leg, he can open it, and I just give him the other. Okay, so being aware of stuff like that, distance management. It's hard for someone to knee slice from a distance, okay? If I feel like I'm getting crowded and he's trying to set up a knee slice, you'll see me maintain this distance, okay? Whatever distance I feel comfortable at until I'm ready to go on the offense, okay? Now, for stuff like shin on shin and sit up guard, right? Like I said, I, I prefer shin on shin as a whole, especially nogi. I'm actually like, I would never really tell people to play this kind of sit up guard nogi um, because you don't really get a lot of the benefits you can get from the gi being able to feed a belt or a lapel and kind of sleeves and do all that to wrestle and knock them over. Okay. But from shin on shin, I have a lot more options, especially uh, like at least with nogi because I get more control points and I have more leverage points. But the problem is there's always going to be a little bit of a opening in these positions for him to under. Okay. Uh, I could try to get tighter and hug it tighter, but this is actually going to make my offense a little harder because a lot of the offensive stuff, I don't really want to be leaning forward too much. Okay, I want to be fighting for his hands, using my feet to control the distance, looking for dummy sweeps, looking for inversions in the stuff, or looking to wrestle up. But I'm usually not going to be this attached to the guy. Okay. Generally, when I'm reaching for shin on shin, and, and I, I can be a little lazier on this because I'm ready to defend the next slice in the ways I'm going to show you. I can reach out here. I do want to try to close my elbow off, but it's actually not going to be the make or break it moment. Okay. Now, important details: you do need to have shin pressure. If you don't have shin pressure, and it, like I don't have to be lifting his foot, I just need to be pushing it into his foot. So if his foot did lift, I would automatically track it, okay, and increase the amount of friction going on. But if I don't have that, he blasts through me. I, I might not be able to react fast enough. This is really going to help me offset his weight. Okay, other ways to not get fucked in this kind of position, I play a lot of foot up. Okay, I don't really want to go on my back yet. If we're trying to push me backwards, I use this to maintain my forward posture and okay, stay up. Right, you see that even here, there's another thing. Okay. So, but I'm okay with that. And this is why. Okay. So, when the bird goes to underhook, the first thing you do is go here. Okay. Just that this buys you time. Right. That's him putting it on my back and going to get closer to the me. But I can't guarantee that's going to stay. Bird can move his leg out and I won't be able to follow him with pressure. Especially my short, stubby, useless legs. 
They're not going that far. So this buys me time. Again, if I did get the opportunity to do this, I, I'm probably already getting put in my back. So what I need to look for is this opposite wrist, or in the E, this opposite sleeve. This is something you have to practice. Wrist control is a skill. If you're not good at it, you're not going to take advantage of stuff like this. Okay. So when Bird goes to underhook me, if I can get his sleeve or his wrist here, okay, I want to keep it as extended as possible. I don't want him to get this up to his chest again or get it high where he can move it around again and move my shoulders around. I want to keep it down and low so that way if Bird tries to come forward, I can put it underneath it. And then it's extremely easy for me to just maintain pressure with that shin and knock him over. Okay? Or if I lose my wrist control halfway down and he posts, I'm not getting knee slice anymore and I'll be able to defend the knee slice a lot better just by turning into it. Okay? So that's one way I defend the knee slice from the setup position. Now another way, this is the way I more often do it, okay, is as soon as I feel his grubby little fingers penetrating me in ways I don't like, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up, and I'm just going to turn my hand over, gi or no gi. I'm just gonna put it on the outside of his head, his neck, okay? Now, for him to have a good underhook, he wants to be close to it. Now, when I make separation between his shoulder and his hand, you can no longer prevent me from literally just re-pummeling him if I wanted to. So from here and here, I can easily re-pummel him. There's nothing he can really do about it in the distance. Okay? That's something you should keep in mind in case you ever have to bail on what we're about to do. Re-pummel him with that space. Okay? Most people are not aware that they're making a mistake letting me do this. Okay? Bird should have to clear this and deal with this before he can cut. Right? So what most people do is they come forward, so they can slice. And I can just push their head out. Right? And then because people knee slice with forward momentum, a lot of times they go past me. And it's very easy for me to turn and start wrestling up behind me. And then I look like a god because I got an effort to sweep. But really it's because birds are fucking me. Right? Which is not aware of what's going on. Now, your ankle grips and stuff like that, okay, have to be pretty on point for this. Like, if I'm not actually able to hold this at all, and Bird goes to knee slice me, and I, this is no good. I might not get finished in the cut, but you can see he's not getting separated as much. Now when I go back, I'm on this. This helps me almost turn his knee, and it really makes me feel safe turning into him. So if his knee went past me here, this gives me something I can wrestle up with. Okay? And I don't want to lose it. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll almost turn into a, a front headlock position if Bird cuts all the way through, and I do try to follow him. So, we're going to this one. Uh, blast it. Okay, and I had to use this to move his frame, move his head. I had to maintain this grip on it. And then what saved me was my shin on shin hook. Okay, let me follow and turn and come up. So, a lot of times they don't fall though. It goes past me. Turn back into me and we end up almost, if we end up in the front headlock, that's okay. Most of the time I just sit back through and reset the position. Because my goal is not to get knee sliced. I didn't get knee sliced, so that's odd. Okay. Now, that's kind of like sitting up. Okay, being aware of your elbows, being aware of how you move this frame around, making sure you got points of attachment. Okay. Now, if I'm on my back here, these knee slices are going to be different, just inherently, especially from something like De La Hiva, Okay. Because Bird, again, has to come all the way down to get close enough to this underhook to do something. Now, this is usually pretty easy to be aware of and defend. Right? You just have to be aware of it. Right? If I have a hook, a good De La Hiva hook, I'm relatively safe from a knee slice. Okay? Because if he tried to cut through me, that hook is gonna just follow him and fuck up his knee. He's not gonna be able to burst through it. He won't be able to get his knee to the mat because that hook will fuck him up. Okay? So, like I won't knee slice while you have an actual De La Hiva hook. I will clear that hook here. Now this is the position you should have warning bells going off on. You're like, oh fuck, it's about to get real, okay? Um, as soon as my, I lose my hook, he's here, he, he's setting up an knee slice right now. I'm always going to assume that, okay? There's a couple you know, different ways people do their knee slice, right? Um, some people reach for it. And this is why I tell you guys not to reach, okay? Because for me, I'm in this position, I see you reaching, I'm just always going to circle my foot in. Okay, he has no way to stop this from coming in somewhere once he takes the pressure off it. And so I want to teach the knee slice. I teach you guys to keep pressure here until you start to cut it, right? 
That way this leg doesn't come back into play. But if they reach, the leg gets freedom. And I can go up and I can put it on his hip. I can go up and lasso them. And if they keep trying to come forward from this lasso, there just is no knee slice. Okay? He can't get through me. He'll have to completely switch gears to a different pass. And because it's no gi, a lot of those side to side passes are just not going to be as effective as they might be in the gi. So I'm pretty safe here. Okay? And again, anytime I can bring my foot to the inside and just hook his knee and hook his shin, I'm not completely safe from a good knee slicer because I will cut over your shin here. Okay? So you're going to have to go back to either abandoning your ankle grip, all right? Or trying to keep your ankle grip and then playing off his head. But because I'm flat, his head's not like in the most easily accessible area. So I'll have to catch him when he's going and just try to give him space as I follow him. You know? But you can see how that's inherently risky. I could lose it. He could be slippery or sweaty, uh, and that could just slide off. Okay? So now you have to work on your awareness of the underhooks. All right? So if Bird did start reaching for the underhook, I don't have to stay on the ankle. Reach for the underhook. It's literally that fucking easy. So you should feel shame every time I knee slice you from here. All right? Let go of the ankle. Don't play off the ankle from De La Hiba here. You're gonna have to switch your grip once I cross your hip. You're gonna have to come and hug it a lot tighter and close this other hook off, which is really poor offensively. Uh, you might have to go under their leg and close this off, which if we're being honest, I probably might be able to knee slice you from here still, or I feel like this is a really easy passing position. So it's not like they're great alternatives, but it's an alternative to being passed instantly. Okay? So being aware, uh, as soon as you get squashed, if you don't feel like you can rotate your foot in, he's keeping good control here, just let go. Start to frame and keep your elbows in. You can switch to some other kind of grip. Right? Now, along that vein, if I do kind of fuck this up a little bit, and I let him start coming down and underhooking me, I'm actually gonna have to turn into a pawn. Right? And what I'm gonna have to do is try to beat him to the recall, or almost turn onto his stomach this way. Okay, so I'll demonstrate this here. Bird starts getting the underhook. He got ahead of me a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Here. I have to turn this way in order to prevent getting pinned here. So if I don't start trying to get this across, I'm going up and around here to slip that underhook. Or if I get lucky before he gets his head down, I can get my hand turned down almost under his shoulder. Like I said, I, I might not get a good underhook on him right away. Okay, he could squeeze this and make life hard, but it's a lot different than him being able to two-on-one nail an underhook. Because if I let him get all the way down here and really start to squeeze that off, like I'm not getting that back. It's not gonna happen. He has to really make a mistake for me to play again. Okay. So, again, if he's coming down already, I already messed up, he can almost turn in this way. And when I roll with higher level guys like Dante Leon, okay, and I'm sloppy and or maybe I telegraph my knee slice too much, this is the kind of thing that they're aware of. And these are the situations I run into. Okay? Dante's great about making sure I don't get good underhooks unless I fucking make those underhooks happen. Okay? So like from here, I'm not safe yet, but he doesn't have an underhook yet. You know, I can even get a knee shield in a little bit, even if I got squashed here. Okay, before the back step. Always watch out for the back step stuff too, by the way. You know, there's a good chance I could just get up here without posting my elbow out. If I post my elbow like this, it hooks my wrist at all, I'm fucking dead in the water. So you're gonna do stuff like this, you know, I'm gonna be on my toes and shoulder, and just I'm rotate up in order to make space to get back on here. Okay. Now I'm playing from basically a dog fall position, which is a lot better for me offensively than just getting knee sliced. Okay. Other places you get knee sliced from, uh, I knee slice people from like double ankle grips all the time and these butterfly hooks. And it's just gonna come to the same thing. I, I gotta be careful about ever letting bird come around my hip like this while he can reach an underhook. Right now I have a foot a grip on his foot and it's not gonna save me. He's gonna peel it off. So that's just gonna be preemptive letting go of his ankle and circling back in so he can't get a full underhook as he comes down. So something like this. If this happens a lot too. One of the things I look for is guys to try to strip through. That's my key to go, because as soon as his knee passes my knee, I'm going. Okay. So if I was gonna do that, I know he's trying to set up his cut here. I'm just gonna let go of that ankle before he really gets to turn and leave my arm. Right. And then I always try to keep really strong butterfly hooks on the other side 
to prevent him from backstepping to begin with and give me something to start to follow him around. And then all of this stuff about keeping his weight off to the side to prevent underhooks is going to be great here because it helped me keep his weight shifted while I switched to the next guard while the bird's turning. If you kept turning, I was going to chase your back right? and stuff like that. But again, it's about preventing the knee slice. Right? So those are some general tips on not getting done in by my favorite moveset. Okay? And this is why it's hard for people to knee slice me. Um, but again, you have to be aware of all this stuff. They have to, you have windows where he's going for his move and you have to be here mentally aware enough to actively prevent it or um, react after the fact in ways like pushing his head around, okay? And be pumping your underhook. So that's kind of it for uh, anti-knee slice tutorial. Bye, have a great time.